This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Tuesday, the 23rd day of June in the year 2020. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting with breaking news tonight. The chief election officer has submitted his final report on the election count to the chairperson of the Elections Commission and the commissioners, and it shows a victory for the APNU AFC coalition. The report is still to be declared. In the report, the chief election officer said he has taken guidance of the Court of Appeal ruling in the Eslin David versus GCOM case that determined the words more votes than as stated in the constitution means more valid votes. He said his submission shows the valid and credible votes in accordance with the representation of the People Act. In the attached submissions, the CEO declared that 171,825 valid votes were cast for the APNU AFC, while 166,343 valid votes were cast for the People's Progressive Party. Based on his calculation, the APNU AFC will have 33 seats in the National Assembly, with the PP Civic gaining 31 seats and the parties on the joint list gaining one seat. The final report to the chair and members of the commission differs from the total vote recount. It appears to have reduced votes from the two major parties based on votes that could not be determined to be credible and valid. Based on the final report, the APNU AFC has lost over 40,000 votes when the numbers are compared to the undeclared vote recount, while the PPP lost over 60,000 votes. The submission of the report comes just one day after the Court of Appeal offered its interpretation of the words more votes than to mean more valid votes as outlined in the Constitution. The People's Progressive Party has since filed an appeal in the matter to the Caribbean Court of Justice. However, the Attorney General of Guyana has pointed out that the CCJ will be unable to hear the matter since the Court of Appeal decision was final. With the report now submitted, the Guyana Elections Commission will have to meet to discuss the report before the way could be paved for a final declaration and the swearing in of the president. More news coming up in just a moment. Hello, boys and girls. As you prepare to write your exams, there are a few things you will have to do each day so that you and those around you can be safe and healthy. Please remember, on the day of your exam, you must wear a mask correctly, covering your mouth and nose before entering the school compound. Wash your hands with soap and water at the entrance of the school at the sink provided for 20 seconds. Paying attention to the palm and back of your hands, between your fingers and their tips. Dry your hands with a clean tissue and dispose in the closed bin nearby. Boys and girls, your temperature will be tested by an official. Then you will go to the designated waiting area with the floor signs and markings clearly visible, standing or sitting two meters or six feet apart at all times. It is now time to start your exam. The invigilator will direct you to the examination room. All the best. Boys and girls playing and gathering are not allowed. Parents, the Ministry of Education thanks you for the support you have given the children during during the time at home. However, in the interest of everyone's well-being, you will not be allowed to enter the school compound. Parents and guardians, we are counting on your support in picking up the children promptly after their exam. Remember, the Ministry of Education will provide transport for children who are living far away that require that assistance. Please be reminded that vending outside the school's compound is prohibited. Only authorized canteen vendors with a copy of their food handler certificate and wearing a mask, food gloves, apron, Hair net and a hat will be allowed. Always remember to wear your mask correctly, wash your hands, and stay safe. And let's win the fight against COVID-19. A message from the Ministry of Education. We all want to stay in touch, right? Now, even more than ever before. So to keep your connection strong, GTT is going two for two. Combine GTT mobile and home internet services and we'll give you 2 gigs of free mobile data each month. With 2 GTT services, you're fully connected at home and on the go. Visit us online at gtt.co.gy slash 2 for 2 to learn more and start doing more with 2 for 2 from GTT. Stay safe. Stay strong, Diana. We're in this together. GBTI is your Guyanese bank, a bank that understands every customer's unique needs, opportunities, challenges, and financial concerns. At GBTI, we see you for you. Whether you're buying a new home or car, planning your next vacation or retirement, saving for your child's future, 
or whether you're ready to take that bold step of investing in your dream business idea, we are with you every step of the way. We hear your stories and watch you focus on your dreams as we share your aspirations. We are more than just banking. We are a family. We are part of your community. Our commitment extends way beyond the walls of our branches and is demonstrated every day in the opportunities we provide to our individual and business customers. The support, time, and commitment we give back to communities across Guyana to help improve the lives of our Guyanese families. Because we see Guyana through your eyes. The following is an important message from the Ministry of Public Health. You can prevent the spread of the COVID-19 virus. If you have the following symptoms, coughing, fever, or difficulty breathing, please stay home. If you don't have these symptoms, then practice social distancing. Avoid crowds. When in a group, keep a distance of at least three feet between yourself and other persons. Please wash your hands with soap regularly or use hand sanitizers. The Ministry of Public Health has a hotline to provide information on the coronavirus. Members of the public can call 227-4986 or 624-3067. Welcome back. Despite declaring that the ruling by the appeal court does not change anything with regards to the declaration of results, the attorneys for PPP General Secretary Barra Jagdew and presidential candidate Irfan Ali have filed an appeal to the Caribbean Court of Justice of yesterday's ruling by the Ghana Court of Appeal. In seeking an urgent hearing of the application, the attorneys representing the PPP are asking the CCJ to throw out the Ghana Court of Appeal ruling and its decision since they maintain that the Court of Appeal had no jurisdiction to hear the matter in the first place. They want a decision inclusive of the declaratory orders to be set aside in its entirety on the basis that the Court of Appeal lacked the jurisdiction to hear and determine the original matter, and that all orders made as part of the decision be discharged. In the application, the attorneys indicate that in their view, the assumption of jurisdiction by the Court of Appeal was irregular and improper. Additionally, they are seeking an interim order restraining the Chief Election Officer from issuing his report or any report in reliance on the decision inclusive of the modified interpretation of Article 177.2b of the Constitution of Guyana, given by the Court of Appeal, pending the determination of the application and the appeal. They also want an interim order restraining the Elections Commission and or the Chief Election Officer and or any servant or agent from taking any further steps to determine whether the recounted votes as tabulated by the Chief Election Officer constitutes a final credible count or otherwise inquiring into the validity or credibility of the tabulated votes pending the determination of the application. The respondents in the matter have been named and served. The Attorney General of Guyana has already indicated that the Caribbean Court of Justice does not have jurisdiction to hear the matter. In a majority decision on Monday, the Court of Appeal, after ruling that it has jurisdiction to hear the election declaration matter, determined that the words more votes than, as stated in the Constitution, is interpreted to mean more valid votes. The ruling has effectively thrown the issue back to the Guyana Elections Commission to determine the issue of credibility as set out in the elections recount order using valid votes. The court action was filed last week by Sophia resident Eslyn David, who was concerned that the Elections Commission was moving to declare the elections without taking into account and acting on the anomalies uncovered during the vote recount. The Elections Commission was scheduled to have a meeting today, but that meeting was postponed because of the move to the CCJ. The Attorney General of Guyana, Senior Counsel Basil Williams, has expressed the view that the Caribbean Court of Justice will not be able to hear the appeal taken before it by the People's Progressive Party on the Court of Appeal ruling since the CCJ does not have jurisdiction to hear and determine the matter. Mr. Williams has pointed out that the Constitution provides that the Court of Appeal shall have exclusive jurisdiction to hear and determine any question as to the validity of the election of a president insofar as that question depends upon the qualification of any person for election or the interpretation of the constitution and any decision of that court under the paragraph shall be final. What the legislature did was to create an exclusive jurisdiction in the Court of Appeal to determine matters involving questions relating to the qualifications of the president or the interpretation of the Constitution in relation 
to matters involving the validity of the elections of the president, but those matters had to be within Article 177. As I said, the court refused to accept those submissions. And the one that you had to have an elected president, which was really the, in the UC Koreana case, for the only case we had really that uh, the course was at Article 177, the Justice Loco had said that it, it should have a narrow interpretation and focus. But one thing was clear is that the or was dis disjunctive. So it meant the persons with the qualification on the one hand, and then on the other hand, any questions about the validity of the elections of the president. The Caribbean Court of Justice was established in 2004. According to the Attorney General, at that time, Article 177.4 of the Constitution was already part of the laws of Guyana. The Attorney General, who is a respondent in the matter filed before the CCJ, has noted that the Caribbean Court of Justice, while accepting its position as a superior court of record, has continuously recognized that it only possesses such jurisdiction and powers as are conferred on it by the agreement or by the Constitution or any other law of the Constitution contracting party. The Caribbean Court of Justice is expected to set the 1st of July as the date when it will hear the appeal filed by the People's Progressive Party, which is seeking to throw out the Guyana Appeal Court ruling on the interpretation of the words more votes than to mean more valid votes in the Guyana Constitution. The attorneys in the matter have been informed by the Deputy Registrar of the CCJ that the bench intends to issue a stay order no later than tomorrow and hold a case management conference on Thursday with the 1st of July to be set as the day for the hearing. The stay order could put to hold on the Elections Commission acting on the final report, which has been submitted by the Chief Election Officer. That report by the CEO was based on the guidance of the Court of Appeal. The report, according to the CEO, has put together the valid votes cast, and that count based on his report would result in victory for the APNU AFC. The PPP wants the entire Court of Appeal ruling thrown out, although it had insisted yesterday that the ruling did not mean much. Let's tell you now that the Ministry of Public Health intends to publish the names of a number of Guyanese nationals who were repatriated recently from the US and the Caribbean and provided incorrect contact numbers and addresses. As part of the agreement for their repatriation, the nationals were asked to provide their contact details so that health officials could be in regular contact with them for the seven days that they have to home quarantine. Today, Deputy Chief Medical Officer Dr. Karen Gordon Boyle explained to news source that efforts to contact some of the persons is turning out to be a problem and the ministry will be forced to publish their names. They said seven days home quarantine so they're allowed to go to their homes where they can be comfortable but all we ask is that they allowed us to have our follow-up seven day surveillance which meant daily calls asking how they were doing, if they have any signs and symptoms so that we would know immediately if someone gets sick so we can put in motion um, the systems that we have in place to, to support them. And lo and behold, we had a few flights that came in. And when we've been calling persons, unfortunately, the numbers have been ringing out. Or in some cases, the numbers were uh, answered, but the person says wrong number. Um, there are about six or seven persons who were supposedly supposed to be in quarantine who were out on the road when we were trying to call them at the numbers provided. So those ones, we're going to follow up ourselves with the Ministry of Health in terms of, you know, um, trying to get them to understand that they can't be doing that. Dr. Boyle said persons must realize that a pandemic is a serious issue and they need to work along with health officials. We, these are not ordinary times. We're dealing with the pandemic. That's the reason why they were stranded in the first place. And our responsibility as Ministry of Public Health is to try and keep our population as safe as possible and to reduce risk for transmission. So one of the sources, one of the obvious sources of um, infection is importation of cases from overseas. And you know what's happening in the U.S. of A. when it comes to the COVID-19 cases. So, of course, our efforts are, okay, anyone who wants to come back, have a PCR test done within a week of travel. And this is the... The only test that we're accepting, we're not accepting the rapid test because they have a lot of false positives and false negatives. So these persons are all required to have a negative test. And then when they come, they still are required to have seven days quarantine. 
Over 400 Guyanese nationals returned on repatriation flights from Barbados, Trinidad and the United States over the past two weeks. More than 500 more are awaiting clearance for their return from the US and Canada. Dr. Boyle is pleading with those who have already returned and provided the incorrect information to make contact with the Public Health Ministry to fulfill the requirements for their monitoring. Recognizing that they pose a potential threat, but trying finding a means to work around that that takes care of their need to be back home and takes care of our need to make sure we protect the rest of the population from the threat of importing disease. So this, this scenario works if everybody sticks to their end of the bargain, which means we bring them home, they stay home for the seven days and isolate from the rest of the family. I mean, the risk is reduced because they would have done a recent PCR test However, who's to say that in the seven or, you know, the days leading up to the, the flight or even at the airport that they could not have been contaminated? There's really no guarantee, but we're just trying to reduce the risk. Um, but then if they, they, they fall on their end of the bargain and they, you know, have given us false, false numbers, it makes it very difficult for us. So instead of us having one phone call to make one contact to confirm that somebody is well, we end up having to make three, four calls, repeatedly trying to call with nobody answering, which, I mean, we already are really stretched when it comes to staff. And that same staff have to be repeatedly calling these numbers now to try and locate these persons. Initially, when the government decided to allow the repatriation flights, it wanted to have all of the persons returning home to be quarantined at a government facility or a hotel for two weeks. When persons locally and abroad objected to that, a decision was made to have the nationals complete their COVID-19 test before coming home and then subject themselves to seven days of home quarantine. And Guyana has recorded one new case of the coronavirus disease over the past 24 hours, as three more persons have recovered. There are now 87 active cases of the virus, with one person in the COVID-19 intensive care unit. The chief medical officer, Dr. Sham Dio Persad, in his report today said as Guyana begins to relax some of its health emergency measures, he would like repatriated nationals to be responsible. Guyana is at the crossroads in this pandemic. We must put a handle on the number of reported cases. And so I wish to plead with our repatriating nationals to act responsibly and provide the health authorities with accurate information on their arrival. This is the only way that the ministry and the surveillance team will effectively be able to monitor you and manage the COVID-19 situation. Dr. Passat also warned citizens about social gatherings, since such gatherings could only result in more cases. I know that the barbershop is the venue where you are accustomed to congregating, socialize and have conversation on whatever topic is current, social issues, and any regional and international affairs that's trending. I understand how much pleasure you derive from being in this environment, but we are in COVID times and COVID-19 is serious. So I am asking that you desist from this risky practice. The owners of the barbershops have the responsibility to ensure that physical distancing is observed, no overcrowding, and that there is provision for hand washing. Wearing a mask must be an important part of the setup. Guyana has recorded a total of 206 cases of the coronavirus disease. The first case was confirmed back in March. The country has been under a 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. curfew since then. Across the region is coming up next. They've made a positive impact on the heavy-duty transportation industry in Guyana since they've arrived. Guyanese are amazed at their power, durability, efficiency, and superior handling capabilities. These are brand new trucks, manufactured in partnership with German, Italian, and French companies. They have a powerful reputation for operating under very adverse Guyanese conditions and come with full after-sales service and spare parts. They're the most sought-after trucks today, with over 500 units in Guyana, and they're available in over 100 countries, including South America and the Caribbean. Caribbean. Be smart by brand new ST Hobo trucks today. Call 608 4998 and arrange for an inspection at ST Truck and Incorporated, Block B, Public Road Covenant, East Bank, Demerara.
We are legions of men standing strong, but never too proud to stoop and help someone. We must send a clear signal to all. Do right. Walk in upright ways, knowing that's what being a man is all about. And ever aware that things will only get worse when good men do nothing. Stand strong. Be the one to live right. Are you washing your hands correctly? Here are some tips on when and how to wash your hands. Step 1. Wet your hands with clean water. Step 2. Then apply soap. Step 3. For 10 to 15 seconds, lather your palms together. Always remember to pay attention to your fingers, especially your nails and tips. And don't forget the back and between of your fingers. Step 4. Rinse hands with clean water for about 20 seconds. Step 5. Dry hands with a clean paper towel or tissue. But when should you wash your hands? After using the toilet, before and after eating, preparing or handling uncooked food, after playing with pets or caring for animals, after sneezing and coughing or blowing your nose, before and after changing babies or caring for others. Frequent hand washing or using a hand sanitizer with alcohol as an alternative will remove viruses and bacteria from your hands. A message from the Ministry of Public Health in collaboration with PAHU WHO. Across the region right now, the National Democratic Party of President Desi Bautasse in Suriname has congratulated the opposition parties on their victory at the May 25 general election and their decision to move towards the formation of a coalition government in the Dutch-speaking Caricom country. The opposition parties together control 35 of the 51 seats in the National Assembly, while Bautasse's NDP won the remaining 16 seats. In its statement, the NDP warned the opposition parties that they should remember the path of success is not one of roses. Last month, Bautasse, who remains head of state until a successor is chosen, said the process towards election of the functions of president and vice president still need to take place according to the rules and regulations. Well, the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States says it has taken note of the moves by the U.S. legislators to classify as human trafficking the Cuban Humanitarian Project, assisting countries to cope with the impact of coronavirus that has so far killed 467,000 people and infected nearly 9 million others worldwide. In a statement, the nine-member sub-regional grouping said that they note with deep concern and repudiate the recent bill introduced by Republican Senator Rick Scott, which classifies Cuba's humanitarian assistance as human trafficking and seeks to extend punitive measures against countries accepting the medical assistance. The statement by the OECS said that they value the work of the medical brigades and they have reiterated their desire to work with all friendly governments that offer tangible support. And finally, at this time, international news. India is expelling half of the staff at Pakistan's High Commission in its capital of Delhi, accusing the diplomats of spying and dealing with terrorists. India will also reduce staff by the same number at its High Commission in the Pakistani capital. The External Affairs Ministry has said there was no immediate response from the Pakistani authorities. Relations between the nuclear powers were already tense after India expelled two Pakistani staffers three weeks ago. They were accused of trying to obtain information about Indian troop movements. Indian media suggests that the latest move was prompted by the alleged mistreatment of two Indian staff members in Islamabad. And that's your new source evening bulletin for tonight. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting.